delighted to be here on Cracker Jack. Cracker Jack! Stop that. You are going to get us into all sorts of trouble on here like that. Oh, my goodness! I'm so sorry. You animal! They don't feel pain the same way we do. They really don't. Let me put that on there. Liliana, what is your favourite colour? Blue? Wow, you could have chosen something easier for him to say, like yellow. <laughs> Flipping it. No, I really like blue. It's my favourite colour. <laughs> There's something strange going on here. Uh, hello? Come in. <laughs> no, 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 no. Why were you screaming? It hurt. What hurt? You stepped on my toe. <laughs> no, 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 no. I trod on your pedal. That sounds worse. Leave it. What a lovely audience. Granda, they are fantastic. <laughs> Granda, what are you doing? I'm waving. <laughs> yes, you can see you waving. Who are you waving at? That lady over there on the front row in the blue scarf and the lovely blue top. <laughs> Why are you waving at her? She's very nice. So what's your name, my darling? Susie. Susie? It's Susie. Susie. Sorry, Susie. Oh, Susie, Susie, Susie. <laughs> Granda, sit up. She's called Susie. Yes, I know she's called Susie. Will you let me carry on? OK, thank you. So, I fancy Susie. <laughs> no! <laughs> Sorry. Granda. What's wrong? That eye is not sticking properly. This is going well. <laughs> right, look, I'll try a different eye. Let me try. Ah! Oh, you did that too hard. <laughs> this isn't going well. <laughs> I think it did some damage. Really? Yeah, I think you might have bruised it. I'll check. Let me have a look. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, hello? Hello? Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right now. Yeah. Mm. What? Oh. The famous ventriloquist distant phone voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? No, I can't do it, no. Bye-bye. Right. I'm just really looking forward to my summer holidays. You are? Yeah, I've got it all booked up and ready to go. Really? Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, where are you going? Where are you going? You got the lines mixed up there, didn't you? <laughs> No, you said my line. I think they all know that that's still your fault. Now, can I look? Hello and welcome to Landon Live. My name is Landon Harvey and today we have the hilarious Max Fulham. Max, how are you doing today? I'm very well, thank you, Landon. Thanks for having me. Oh, well, thank you for being on. So you made quite the impression at the convention, the ventriloquist convention last year. Could you talk, talk a little bit about yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely. It was it was an amazing thing to go to because I've been watching videos of it and looking at pictures and always seeing people's videos of the dealer's rooms and, oh, my goodness, so many puppets. Um, yeah. So I, I'd be, I've been looking at that for years and going, oh, one day I might be able to go there. And then the brilliant, the brilliant, brilliant, brilliant Al Gettler um, started the ball rolling with not only – um me me going out there but me coming out and actually performing on the international show which was unbelievable and beyond what i'd expected i just thought oh i'll, I'll go there i'll go there one year um but yeah, yeah i got to i got to perform as well uh and it was it was very strange seeing so many familiar faces from facebook um, right. and from previous convention videos i'd seen of oh my goodness it's it's i could touch them i'm not going to but i could touch them um yeah. And then the, the performance was one of the, the most surreal and best of my life so far, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. And I, I heard that Ron Lucas had to, had to go on <laughs> after you. <laughs> yeah. So Steve-O, who wonderfully compares, um, uh -huh. he, was, he was chatting to me and Ron Lucas turned up 
uh, on on the day of that show and oh my god ron lucas amazing uh, mm. and steve had an idea that we could we could get ron to go on at the end as a surprise at the end of the international show and right. i thought that was a fantastic idea um because ron lucas so yeah. um ron had given me a little gag something to do with states that i can't remember and didn't understand um but uh, he'd give me a little gag to introduce him and get him on. And the guys was um, that Steve would say, oh, Max, if you got any more you could do. And I'd say, no, but maybe I could give someone new a chance. You know, this person I, I've met at the convention, they're, they're doing some nice work. They're up and coming, blah, blah, blah. And then, of course, yeah. Ron Lucas walks out. Um, the, the, the thing I hadn't taken into consideration was that the audience would be so lovely at the convention that they'd stand up at the end of my act. And so it made it a bit awkward. <laughs> <laughs> because I was like, oh, thank you so much. And then Steve-O was like, do you have any more? And the audience were like, yes, do you have any more? And I was like, no, no, I don't. Um, I've given you everything. Um, but here's Ron Lucas. And it was it was still an amazing surprise. And, you know, to have Ron Lucas walk out on the same stage as you, never mind get to introduce him. That was that was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. I've, I've talked to multiple, I wasn't able to make it last year, but I've talked to multiple people that said you killed. And uh, of course you shared a little bit of uh, uh, your performance with, with, in the video that you had on the virtual ventriloquism variety show. Yes. That's and uh, that was just hilarious. I, I love that joke. And you'd said that you tried it other places and it didn't work as well. <laughs> um, and I didn't yeah. realize you were serious about that. <laughs> well, um, yeah, it was it was a gag I came up with for the convention. So when I said yeah. that at the convention, it was a little lie, as in, oh, I've tried this at other places, but no one else gets it. Um, yeah. But I have I have done it since at well, as you saw in the show reel, that wasn't at the convention. That was at a different yeah. convention actually. That was the Blackpool Magic Convention, so the largest okay. magic convention in the world. And wow. I was like, I think I think they'll have enough understanding event because it's mm -hmm. an, an allied art. Um, I yeah. think they'll have enough understanding that I can I can do this gag, and it it did work there, but obviously not as well as it did at the convention. And oh, it was so funny! It made me laugh so much when that got such a laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah and it's a, it's a great space too because there's I mean everyone's packed in, and when you hear a laugh, it you it it's a wave over. You, oh my so. goodness! I miss the 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 sense of having people packed together and laughing because it's the best sort of laughter. Because yeah, mm -hmm. you do you hear you hear jokes and you watch them land in different places and spread and it's wonderful you see a joke land with with trish and laurie over there and and then and then spread <laughs> throughout the room <laughs> yeah 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 it's great wow that's phenomenal how'd you get into ventriloquism how did i get into ventriloquism um my parents bought me a puppet for christmas one year uh i was i think we I we're saying I was nine years old. That's when we think it was. I think it was nine. Yeah, I was nine years old for Christmas. Parents bought me a puppet. I think I must have shown an interest in like little hand puppets or something. And they bought me uh, a puppet by Living Puppets, German company. They do, you know, they're, they're toys, but they're lovely puppets. I mean, right. it's the same same makers. Uh, Terry Fater's first Emma, what he did on AGT. That that sort okay. of look to it. The yeah. the big the big mouth. Um, mm ones so that was that was my first puppet it was a little puppet called ben which is a stupid name to give your first puppet as a ventriloquist um looking back hindsight is a wonderful yeah, thing yeah yeah. Uh, yeah great work max uh you've fallen at the first hurdle um yeah so i was given that and i became completely obsessed basically and i you know we're of the age where we can't say that oh we saw some we saw some great ventriloquist on this beautiful ornate stage we say so posing on youtube uh, yeah. And that that is, you know, I saw people like Ron Lucas uh, doing like Scorch on Letterman or something like that. Mm. Uh, I would just type in ventriloquist into YouTube and just watch as much as I can. So I discovered it and I went, oh, I, I like this. I like this. I'll, I'll and in that childlike way, I went, I'll do it. Uh, so I, I I did. I just I, I taught myself, uh, practiced. And uh, I suppose it went from a stage where I was bad and like aunties would say, oh, that was very good um to the point where i became fairly good at it and the compliments became genuine yeah uh, what was that i mean did you ever were your family did they ever just think oh this is just a passing thing that he's just picking up right I now mean, well I, I would assume that my parents 
when I was nine years old, they thought, mm -hmm. oh, what a lovely little toy we're buying him for Christmas. They did not think, oh, what a lovely career we're buying <laughs> him for Christmas. Um, yeah. yeah, it was, uh, I'd, I'd always been sort of performery, uh, which in itself was a bit strange because my family are not a performing family at all. Uh, so I'd always been into magic and like my first thing was dance. Not that you could tell now, but um <laughs> Yeah, that that was my that was one of my first things. So I'd always done like sort of musical theater. Have magic. you integrated that within your show? <laughs> oh yeah, I have a full forty-five minute interpretive dance section uh, in the middle oh, of my show. Uh, it's oh, it's beautiful. It represents um, uh, peace and oh, conflict in society under political regimes. It. Yeah, it's it's really deep. I love that. Um, so you do an hour of ventriloquist show, but it's actually forty-five minutes of dance, and then the rest is just. Oh yes, it's about it's about five <laughs> minutes event. Once once I've stopped panting after yeah. the dance, yeah. <laughs> Very awesome. <laughs> well, I'm curious, what was the environment like growing up in the UK as a comic and vent act? Oh, it's very difficult. Everyone hated vents. I get rocks chucked at me in the street. Um, no, uh, it was, it was, uh, it was, it's always been interesting, and it, it always is because um, you say, "Oh, I'm a ventriloquist," and people go, huh, "What? What?" Um, <laughs> which is universal, really, because it's not mm -hmm. a job that people have, and we have it as a job. Uh, yeah. But yeah, the environment was very supportive for me. I was very lucky to have, you know, supportive parents and family and a and a brother who I'd annoy with it. And um, and then I'd, I'd do school talent shows and stuff and I'd get a, a hit from that. I'd always loved entertaining. And so it was always it was always driven from a point of me making people laugh. So it was it was fairly supportive because I was, for the most part, succeeding in uh, making people enjoy what I do, which is uh, a good thing. I've uh, yeah. discovered yeah for sure for sure uh we have dale brown uh he's joined the chat he said the words getler and brilliant have never been used in the same sense before <laughs> uh they are my favorite pair uh <laughs> love it we need to get them in like tweedledum and tweedledee outfits at the convention oh that'd be great yeah um <laughs> so you've also performed in a lot of pantomimes talk about that yeah, so um, for our international viewers, uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Worldwide here, and um, yeah. pantomime does not mean the same thing as it does in the United States of America, mm -hmm. uh, which I believe it does mean man with a white painted face doing all this nonsense. Yeah. Um, but um, it, over here, it's a traditional family Christmas show, uh, which usually takes on a, a famous story like Snow White, Jack and the Beanstalk, Cinderella, Dick Whittington, which I don't think you have over there. Um, Peter Pan sometimes as well uh, mm -hmm. has sort of those set stories. And then it's uh, a bonkers a bonkers version of that with uh, uh, a man playing uh, a woman called, who's known as the Dame, uh, sort of very over the top uh, female motherly character. Um, mm. And then you've got the comic. It, it's it's quite, it's very traditional. You know, they've been going on since like the 1700s sure. uh, in, in some form, um, mm. which uh, does that even, does that outdate the United States? I don't know, um, but... Um, <laughs> Uh, it, it, there's that you can see similarities between that and what's called uh, commedia dell'arte, which is an, an old Italian, like an ancient Italian uh, art form. So there was the comic, there was you know the the, the emperor or the king, there was the the damsel in distress. You had mm -hmm. those sorts of roles, and it, it follows that fairy tale sort of pattern. But yeah, I usually play the comic. Um, I've been doing them for three years now, so I've okay. only done Aladdin actually. Every year it's been Aladdin, mm -hmm. but that's my favorite one to do. So uh, wow. have there always been? Have they always had a ventriloquist as a comic or is that something more uh, recent? because no not at all so um it's not like we we must find a ventriloquist for for this for this uh for this comic role because there's not yeah. enough to go around um mm -hmm. there are far there you know there are hundreds of pantos going on uh amateur and professional around around the uk uh mm -hmm. but uh ventriloquists have been involved with panto you know for a long time uh because as things became so celebrities appear in pantomimes that you usually have names to draw people in so it, it's 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 not it doesn't take itself seriously it's a very self-acknowledging no fourth wall it's all with the audience so it has that sort of feel wow. of a variety show so variety acts have always slotted into it whether it be gymnasts uh jugglers uh special acts you know like vent ventriloquists so you've got 
you've got all sorts. Keith Harris, uh, will with Orville and Cuddles. He he yeah. he was a he was a big he was a big star of Panto. Um, but yeah, ventriloquists have been doing it for a long time and still do. You know, Paul Zerdin uh, has for the last few years taken uh, sent stage at the Palladium. Uh, which is, you know, an incredibly famous theatre in London. I've been doing various venues uh, in Panto and, uh, a I mean, a good few other ventriloquists mm -hmm. as well. Wow. And and you had uh, your photo on a bus or a cab or something, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, so... That um, must have been neat. I mean, did you expect to was see that? or was bizarre. it bizarre. Like I didn't expect to see that at all. Yeah. Um, so the, the Christmas just gone, the Panto I did was with um, Qdos, who are the biggest pantomime company in the oh, world wow. mm -hmm. and so it, it's a big deal they're, they're huge production shows they look stunning and they, they they really are spectacular and so i was with um uh christopher biggins was our dame so he played my mum. he's a he's a he's a big name over here okay. um and is sort of known for being a pantomime dame so he's been doing panto dame for a long time and it you know it's quite prestigious in that sense mm -hmm. but the advertising for this not only involved my face in a massive in a massive way across the front of this theater but uh on the train barriers um and basically they the, the, the staff at the theater said mm -hmm. oh you might we might have the poster on a bus and i said my face will not be on a bus and they went we think it will be and i went well if you do get it on a bus i'll buy a massive jar of sweets for you and the team and then lo and behold i got a tweet from the theater saying uh you owe us some sweets because oh, there hilarious. was my face on a bus and it was bizarre totally yeah. bizarre so neat w was there anything that you learned in that panto that you take and use as a performer today oh my goodness panto is almost the place to learn uh, mm -hmm. because you're doing two shows a day for a month, uh, if not, if not like six weeks. So mm -hmm. um, how spaced out are those in the day? Those two oh, shows? you'll, you'll do uh, we, like, uh, the Christmas just gone. We were doing a one and a five was our most usual okay. thing. So, you know, you do the show at one, you finish at hmm, maybe like half three, four ish. And then you, you reset, maybe have a bit of dinner and you reset your props. Well, in my case, you reset all your props and then you go again. Uh, and that is, uh, six days a week for mm -hmm. a month to like six weeks. So I think the year before that I did 64 shows, um and some th some three show days so we'll do uh three shows which is it, it's an intense period but you learn a heck of a lot because you 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 know i'm doing my act twice a day for a month so not only do i learn stuff about my own act i learn stuff about the craft um mm -hmm. learn stuff from other performers because i get to work in a cast and not be a lonely ventriloquist for one yeah uh, which is beautiful so and it's such actually good friends. it's actually your material that you wrote it's not part of a script with the other thing so uh it's sort of a mixture of both so i'll 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 usually appear in scenes without a puppet which i do actually quite like it's like oh yeah. i have two hands look at them like, um yeah. look look at both both of them i have both um, look you can acknowledge me now yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Uh, so the year before last, there was a big what's called a slosh scene, which is very slapstick and very messy. So, uh, you mm -hmm. know, I wasn't with a puppet for that one, but, you know, I got covered head to toe in gunge and I was sliding around the stage and it was mad, absolute madness. It involved a, a quick change shower mid show. It, it, you know, it's mad. But um, yeah. yeah, you le you learn a heck of a lot because you're with other people and you're often with uh very experienced professionals um you learn a lot about audience stuff because you're constantly uh, referencing the audience it's a very interactive show you know the kids mm -hmm. and the adults everyone is is shouting out and stuff so it's, it's a massive learning a learning ground and I've, ever since the first one i did you know i've always wanted to be a part of pantom and that first one i did i went wow this is this is something else and i've been hooked that's phenomenal that's really neat. have you ever that's gotten really any cool. character ideas from it or Anything like that? Um, Any inspiration or maybe written new lines while you're uh, oh yeah lines do mm. lines do develop so uh the year before last when I was in a, a an independent production so the theater produced their own panto uh, in mm. Cambridge which was it was just such a lovely a lovely atmosphere um but you know things evolve so something will go wrong one day say for example in that slipping and sliding scene i get stuck in the washing machine i know this makes no sense but i'd get stuck in the washing machine yeah. um we then me me and the dame who were in that scene we go that got a really good reaction let's play that and keep that in so there are some 
Pan Panto does have things go wrong, and sometimes they do genuinely go wrong, but sometimes oh. you have plan planned ad libs and that sort of thing, and they take the house down. And that is actually another thing I've, I've learned how to do. I've had to learn how to ad lib and have mm -hmm. something go wrong and yeah. play it for real every single performance, especially in the last one I did just did. There was a, a scripted routine with three of us mm -hmm. where um, we'd be doing a tongue twister and I had to muck up the tongue twister and accidentally say a rude or just about say a rude word. But I had to play that for real every single show. And you get halfway through and you go, how do I, how do I do this again? And how do I make this seem fresh and for the first time and genuine? Right. Um, and the, the sort of the way, you know, is when audiences walk out and go, oh my goodness. Well, actually at the time we went to see it, we got to see him do, um, he actually mucked up when we went to see it and they go out feeling like they've seen something special, which is so sure. nice. Yeah. It's phenomenal. Uh, Bob Ramba is here with us. He, he's commenting. Yay. Do people still talk about Norman wisdom. Yeah, people still talk about Norman Wisdom. Not um, not in everyday life. It's not like a greeting we use. Uh, Norman Wisdom to you. But um, yeah, Norman Wisdom's a, a huge a huge name and was a massive star of Panto. Great comedian, yeah. Good. It's great. Um, can you share how you decide to add a character and to write for one? Oh, it's really interesting because I saw. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like I don't obey the rules. Okay. Um, when it comes, I feel like there's my method is probably not frowned upon but mm -hmm. it's it's not it's not the oh i've had a great idea for a for a character i've written a fantastic routine i'm now going to have that puppet made uh because this started as a play thing for me and okay. i'm only still just sort of getting out of this period where i have a, an idea for a character and i go oh well i'll have that made that'd be a really good character i can see how that would work uh yeah. it's still been a case of me going i want that puppet and then buying that puppet and then trying to use that puppet yeah yeah so I think, because I'm, I think a lot of people can relate to that even even people oh, like my puppets we, so we've all got cupboards full of puppets and you yeah. know you're i mean i'm immensely jealous of you because you can make your imagination come true uh which is <laughs> which is very good but you know like my, i've got my granddad here i will mm -hmm. i will get him out oh yeah we'll make it a full screen on you here we go yeah full screen on me look at that professional backdrop there Look at that. That's wonderful, isn't it? Where it just cuts off there. That's um, that's that's no expense spent on that. Um, right. Let's get you up here. This is awkward. Yeah, it's it's a bit of an awkward, bit of an awkward angle. You you perch there. All right. Yeah. Land and live. Land and live. No difficult letters in that. No, not at all. That's really really good. Yeah. Reflecting on my glasses, that light. Yeah, is a bit. Yeah. Uh, but this is my granddad puppet. Uh, I bought I bought him. Uh, when I saw him and I liked him and um, stop touching me. Um, uh, that's uh, yeah. I bought him. Let me get in thrown. Yeah. Um, bought him and I loved him. And then I wanted to develop, uh, develop him into a character and he's become my granddad. And in the last few years, he's really come into his own and we've really worked on making it an actual, like a proper uh, grandson, uh, granddad relationship, which has been quite sweet. Uh, wow. How, yeah. is, how is that? I, uh, you know, developed for you because that that can mean anything really it's just based off of the well, character yeah so so my my manager noticed i was i was you know getting quite angry at my granddad because i had that classic thing of uh ventriloquist tries to do You're something puppet forth. derails right. it ventriloquist yeah. tries to do something puppet derails it um yeah um look at that auto alive it's great isn't it <laughs> didn't even have to shell out a grand um and basically uh so we wanted to develop something that was more that was more real and a bit more sincere i mean he already wears what were my genuinely my granddad's um so that's um that's uh well it's weird isn't it yeah it's, it's a bit weird um but <laughs> um so we, we've we've worked on having him uh having moments where it's more uh it's sweeter basically mm -hmm. it's sweeter i i care for him a bit more um, and he's sort of uh, a naughty granddad who, uh, who has a bad, had a bad influence on me. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and I'm working on a quick change act. What? Well, I'm working on a quick change act. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> working on a, work, add, add a bit of magic to the thing. Yeah, yeah, working. Do you want to see it? Yeah, yeah, right, I'll see it. All right, watch this. All right, watch this. Okay. <laughs> Watch right, watch quick change like right. those ones you've seen. Okay, right, right, fab. Three, two, 
one, go. All right, Granddad, have you, have you done it? I'm nearly done. All right, come back up here. No, I'm not ready. No, come back up here. I'm not ready. Oh, he's not. He's not ready. <laughs> um, anyway, that's my Granddad. Um, yeah. So I bought I bought him off the shelf and then developed Didn't the character right. from there really. And that that's I mean right. the, the my monkey who I use is my main sort of panto character because mm -hmm. he's really like my family character. Really was great he, with kids. Was he created for uh, panto? Well, no. Again, he was one of my first puppets. He was okay. like the Christmas. He was like the Christmas after my first puppet. He was mm -hmm. this. I went looking for this specific monkey puppet I'd seen on TV. Mm -hmm. And because I used to type puppet into Google and go to like page a hundred, what going to every website. Cause I was yeah. obsessed. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm, I'm fine now. Um, but <laughs> yeah, I found this puppet and asked for it for Christmas. It arrived and I, I actually used the, the first edition in my first panto. And then for the second one, I went, I think I need something a bit more professional that's not made in China and has a uh, a rubber plastic face. Uh, right. So I had a wonderful maker called Chris Kendall work on my monkey. And so mm -hmm. now I have a, a beautiful monkey who I have my second edition of as well. So I have I have two of them, uh, oh. which is which is which is great. I mean, that that's an amazing thing. I really felt professional when my my first like update of a character, my first custom uh, professionally made update of a character came through. That was a that was yeah. a big moment. So som sometimes it comes with that in buying. I do like to experiment in terms of buy the cheap puppet, see mm -hmm. if it works, and then you can have it made if it really does work. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it does vary for me. Sometimes, uh, for example, nowadays, I sometimes do have an idea for a character and then get it made, which feels very professional. It really does. Um, like I decided, oh, I want to put a bit of like, I want to put a little bit of cheeky, little bit of political humor into my shows. I was thinking, mm -hmm. oh, I want to put a little bit of cheeky, little political humor into my shows. And I thought I will get a puppet of our prime minister made. Now our prime minister at the time was Theresa May. Mm -hmm. uh, so this was just before uh, Boris Johnson. And okay. uh, I, I sent off and I had this uh, Theresa May puppet designed and i thought oh this is original this is gonna be good this is gonna be really good and uh she she arrived um on the day on the day that theresa may resigned so that was um money well spent uh anyway yeah <laughs> wow satire yeah. you have to move move with the times uh but uh yeah I, I don't know what i can adapt her into i think she's just gonna have to be an outdated prime minister character Mm -hmm. Um, she's, she's, her, she's terrifying. She's terrifying. <laughs> wow. Well, that's, that's hilarious. Um, so your, so your writing process for these characters just depends on how long, how much you, how long you spend with them each, <laughs> each, <laughs> each, Sorry. each show you do and just watching the character evolve, working on the, uh, the material between you two, trying to vary from the, the typical, what is expected of a ventriloquist. And what's kind of been done and already out there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, you know, I obviously I started off with a fairly basic routine. And, you know, my granddad still does follow some of those things. Mm. Yeah, I mean, you've got an old man puppet. Yeah, I know. Got an old man, an old man puppet. Yeah, no one else does. Shut up. Um, but uh, you know, I do, I like to tackle the tropes as well. Like with the mm -hmm. phone gag that we, we talked about briefly at the start, I, yeah. I like to tackle those tropes head on, especially when they're well known, but it's even funnier to me when I have to perform them for a group with a specialist knowledge who go, Oh my God, that's really funny, but it will not work outside this room. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it comes a case of sometimes I go, right, I need a new routine for this bounce about concepts for routines. And I will, you know, sit down and write or work with someone on that. Um, and then sometimes it happens or organically. I think it's I'm still discovering my writing process, I feel. Um, and at the moment, you know, seeing productive people on the Internet is the worst people doing <laughs> flipping yoga on their Instagram stories. Um, yeah. And you just you know, I'm sat on the sofa eating crisps going, how do you do funny? Um, <laughs> and you sometimes forget, I mean, you know, I'm really admiring your output. You're putting out so many things like, uh, your TikToks are coming out at a rate of knots and you've, you've now got such a following that you're oh, able to bounce you. their comments. And that, that's a mm -hmm. really fantastic thing you've got going there, but your, your gag rate with stuff like views news as well. You're right at your writing gags. And that's, that's such oh, a great thing, which I'm, you know, still finding my feet with gag writing. Cause I tend to go for, uh, stuff that is very stupid. Mm -hmm. But you know, there's an audience for everything, and and I'm curious. I want to. I want you to talk a little bit about a little, 
words are hard. A little bit about that, um, how it varies when you write a sketch a comedy, uh, like a you know something you post on YouTube or maybe you know, your Facebook page, versus when you're writing for your own vent act. Does the writing process differ? Um, are you able to do ideas that you wouldn't be able to do on stage? How, what's your approach to that? Oh yeah, totally. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. I did. You know, the, we'll probably talk a bit more later about the the stupid series I did at the start of uh, the start of all this lockdown uh, called Drivel Peddler. Um, Drivel Peddler, yes. yes. Um, and that was that was sort of ideas that I'd had. For for ages that I knew I couldn't translate to stage, as well as some ideas that I just wanted to do, and mm. ideas that were too weird for my for my the mainstream gigs I was doing. Like mm. I was like, oh, they they won't appreciate this because it's a bit strange, um, you know. And I'd, I'd been wanting to do a series like that for about a year, and so then the world stopped, and I went, well, do you know, this is actually really convenient. Uh, but no, all the work was cancelled, so I thought I might as well do something. Uh, but yeah, right. so sketch writing is, I do I do like doing little sketches online, and usually that comes from a concept. Sometimes I'll script it fairly heavily. Other mm -hmm. times I'll do, predominantly, I tend to just do takes wild and just improv, um, and, then, and then I'll have my vague skeleton and improv around that. And then if I go, oh, that was really good, instead of cutting that together, I will then do another take and add in what I wanted to do. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's definitely a different process and I'm getting a lot more used to that because I've done a lot of video content uh, over the, the lockdown for, for both my own release and for jobs as well. Yeah. So it, it's, been a, it's been a bit of a learning curve, learning how to do all this technological stuff as well, mm. yeah. But it's to get a great way to stay in the loop and show people that you're still there and still alive. Isn't it? Yeah. You sort of have to keep your, your profile going. And also it was the, you know, as, as egotistical as it is, mm -hmm. the likes are the only way we even feel something vaguely similar to applause and get that, that little bit of, Oh, I, I, I remember that. And also yeah. when you, when you, when you just lose your, your, this is not, this is not me keeping it light, but when you just lose your funny, you know, like, like in the middle of lockdown, you're just sitting there going, I just, uh, well, I'm, uh, I just, shall I just not, shall I just not do this? I just get a job at a supermarket and make people laugh at the till. Uh, cause you, that, I mean, people will laugh more. When, the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's the tears of a clown. It really is. Yeah. They'll make a movie about it someday. They won't. <laughs> it's boring. Um, but but yeah, it's it's that mm. sort of thing. It's it's when you lose your funny. Sometimes posting a video on social media, as well as for the cynical reasons of keeping your profile up, sometimes it is an organic thing, igniting that passion you felt at the start and entertaining people uh, in as sappy a way as that as that sounds. Well, and you're killing it on Instagram too with your uh, your <laughs> the misspelling bee. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. the the misspelling bee. That was an idea I had and thought would last approximately one week, but I have <laughs> currently been doing it for about ten thousand weeks. Um, wow. And basically, I uh, <laughs> I say a word, and people mm -hmm. have to spell that word, but the the right answer is not allowed. Um, uh, that's 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 the gist of it. People just have to spell it wrong, and then I'll read out their answers in in ludicrous ways, and we, we blah, blah blah blah, and that we get you know we get some hilarious answers, and it's great. People are so funny, and then we announce the winners at the end, and of course, because it is the misspelling B, mm -hmm. the, the loose tie to this next concept, the misspelling B. If you do spell the word correctly, then that will summon a plague of bees. Yes, all together now we know the words. Um, but yeah, it will summon a plague of uh, B. Oh, oh no! Oh no! Oh no! This, See what you know. This is. Look what! Look what! I hope! I hope you're happy now. Um, look what you've done. Look at that! Look! Oh God! Would you? Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, you would. Yes, on the gizzy gizzy gee. What? On the gizzy gizzy gee. Sorry, G or the gizzy gizzy gi. Yeah, G gizzy gizzy busy busy big G gizzy gizzy gi. Gi busy busy big gizzy gizzy gi. busy busy big gizzy gizzy gi. busy busy big gi. on a wasp is a wasp. Um, <laughs> uh, that joke for some reason works, but also for ventriloquists they go, yeah. ha ha. Hold on, wasp is also really difficult to say. <laughs> it, it's like ha ha, huh? Uh, like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what? yeah. Um, <laughs> here in the chat, we have Al Gettler 
uh, joined us. And I don't think he was here earlier or he would have responded to Dale Brown's comment. But welcome, Al. He said Max is uh, killing it. One of the most, uh, one of the most, quote, quote, most likely to succeed in my book. Incredible talent and, uh, that studies very hard and works harder. I agree. Stacey wow. Michael said, Thank you, Al. great talent. Lori Bruner said, Max, you're so creative and absolutely hilarious. And then Peter Michaels Jr. actually sent in some <laughs> advice for you, Max. He said, you should put on a mask and talk about how easy it is. To do event with a mask on. <laughs> I'd love, you know, that's such an original idea. I hope you, I hope you capitalize on that before anyone else. I will run, I will run with that because uh, I think if I see think, <laughs> just between me and you, cartoon, I don't think anyone else is doing that. I don't think anyone, anyone else is doing that. that. that little cartoon on Facebook with me of that that ventriloquist with the mask on. <laughs> well, yeah. Now that lockdown has eased, uh, if anyone else does. Uh, you know, I will be visiting your house personally uh, and uh, <laughs> throttling you. Um, no, it's uh, no, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, and yeah, that th those occasionally come around. That's the thing we because ventriloquism is such a unique thing to do. Whenever mm. people who know you see something vaguely related to vent, it's so sweet. But they do have the tendency to tag you in everything and yeah. send everything to you but it, it no it's lovely it is and you know i was doing i was doing a ma a, a gag with a mask in february before mm. this became a thing where everyone had died um mm. and i thought you know that's that's fine but then when it got to march i was like this just feels a bit insensitive now it just feels a bit and also everyone's doing it and it's a meme now so yeah <laughs> yeah Oh, yeah. Pete. Oh. <laughs> Mike Palmer joined. He, he's asking, Max, do you write all your material or do you have help? Uh, so I do, uh, in the early days, my, my dad would write the occasional line. Uh, and, mm. you know, one of his lines is still very much in the act. Um, he's he's very funny. Um, yeah, I've, I've come up with the, the, the vast majority myself. But my manager now, uh, Hillary, who is brilliant and she she's been a she's been a comedian and impressionist for for years now and she has a vast amount of experience so we we're very much we do we do collaborate on stuff like that in terms of we will bounce ideas off each other and when we need to write say for a specific project or for mm. a gig where we need to put a bit of uh, either like custom branding or uh, something like that in there we'll we'll work uh, pretty heavily on developing something custom for that but yeah we, we do bounce ideas off each other because we have a similar sense of humor i mean anything whenever we <laughs> whenever we have a meeting we end mm. up hysterically laughing which is a, a wonderful which is a wonderful situation to be in but yeah i mean the, the most part of course, I have the sort of last say of, of what goes in the act, but I do have the occasional bit of collaboration. But I'm I can't yet afford a team of writers. I can't yet afford that. No. Yeah. Well, there are a few other events uh, in the UK. Do you guys ever meet up or hang out or or uh, every Thursday? Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> no. Um, uh, yeah. Well, it's so, sort of when we when we do bump into each other. I know there's been mm. things like Ventorama, which was sort of like a, a event meetup in the UK, which I, uh, I, I went to, uh, managed to get to once. Um, but yeah, it's there's, there's not as big a thing as the convention, obviously. The convention is the, the mecca it mm. is uh, for, for Vent, it really is. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, it's it's good to know the the, the vents in the UK, all the, all the way from the brilliant children's entertainers who use vent in the UK, um, to people like uh, the wonderful Steve Hewlett, who's who's been so supportive of me right from the very beginning, and it's it's great to see him supporting um, Nick uh, Nicholas Bushi so much now. He's you know. That, yeah. that's just wonderful uh, steve is such a caring guy and really cares about the art as well as being knowledgeable and funny and good at his job he really cares about the art and progressing it and so good on him yeah 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 he's he's very very nice guy uh we i had an interview with steve and he's yes it was so great fascinating to hear his story um what is one of your best show memories and one of your craziest show memories i love the suspense the glass of water runs that's great um, oh no, it's good in it it's like a job interview yeah. <laughs> yeah. The the best and worst performance memories I've had. Yeah. Um uh I would say the 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 best is well, I've got a few highlights. Uh the convention is genuinely 
one of my highlights and it is you know it's it's a it's a it sounds completely stupid to say this but when people i did i wasn't expecting people to stand up i mean i was i was having so much fun myself i almost forgot i was doing a job um i was i was very much like i was just having the time of my life the people i felt like I, I felt like we were all together just having a, a really good time which is my favorite audience dynamic and it's similar to panto where mm -hmm. you've got everyone there it's not like a musical theater performer standing on stage looking out into the distance singing uh, audience performer it's variety and vent uh, has this wonderful thing of bringing everyone together and it's like come along we'll have a lot of fun so the vent the convention was just a blast in every way and when people stood up i did get a, a little lump in my throat um because uh, i'm a big softy uh but uh my first tv appearance was uh a dream come true it was the most incredible day um to appear on uh cbbc it was it was unbelievable and especially on a show it was called crackerjack and it was a show that they brought back and brilliantly usually when they revive things it's a bit like Oh, yeah. no. but they'd done such a good job of this and it was like variety acts on every week being like exposing kids to variety again it was oh, it was wonderful uh, to be a part of that and then never mind to get my own my own first proper spot on tv and to watch that in in my living room and see my actual self knowing what it felt yeah. like to to be to be in that rather than just watching it externally was that was uh, yeah. it's a bit yeah, of a, the, the difference of perspective must have been really neat it's a, to bit, it's a bit strange yeah and yeah. it was such a special occasion we we invited a rather eclectic bunch of people around we had um everyone from like uh friends uh family friends we even invited like my, a few old teachers who had been supportive to me around so it was a really weird bunch of people in my in my front room but uh yeah. it was the most it was a lovely evening it really was yeah wow oh uh, worst yeah. worst that was it <laughs> how could i forget that um worst gig um i haven't I'm very lucky. I haven't had loads of terrible, terrible gigs. Or maybe some uh, there was, something happened that was weird out of blue or something crazy. Oh, we got all of those. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, There was one panto where the, the street that the theatre was on had a power cut, so we all went to the pub. Um, no, we didn't. We, we sat in silence and cried. Um, but um, So we had a show cancel, which was tough. Um, what else? I had uh, my, my granddad was flirting with a woman. Um, Again, it's an original routine structure, so I want to try it. Your character um, in your show, your your character granddad. Yes, my yeah. character granddad. Uh, I, yeah, I hadn't just brought my granddad along and went, um, whilst I'm doing the act, could you just sort of be a bit weird with the way the women? Um, and uh, you know, it was a decent decent way up onto stage. It was a it was a ray is a raised stage. It was a stage, right. and uh, you know, he he said, uh, give us a kiss as a joke, and I I, dra I drag him back, and so, you know that that's not that's not that's not hashtag me too. No, that's not. Um, I don't say that. Um, and yeah. she she was a woman of of a of a fair age, and so I decided to climb up onto the stage and come and give him a kiss, um, which was uh, so stage invasion is a, is always a yeah. good one. A stage yeah. invasion is a is a really good one, and um, I then I then think I think back to the the probably the weirdest gigs I've done. Uh, it's probably in the early days when I did, uh, as well as uh, kids' parties and uh, f family events, I also did uh, old people's homes. Okay. And uh, I, I loved them for the most part. Mm -hmm. I No, I did. Don't get me wrong. I loved them. Yeah. But there was the occasional one, which was a little bit weird. Mm -hmm. uh, and the one that sticks out in my mind was doing the Dementia Awards Christmas party. Oh, wow. uh, now, this is obviously a very sensitive situation uh, because it was, you know, I walk into a room, I was 16 maybe, uh, and there are old people with their families, and as I'm setting up, yeah. it's it's Christmas, the old people are with their families, and as I'm setting up, some of them are saying, are you taking me home? And it's just the most, like, joyless situation. It's so terribly sad. So I was like... You know, when you have to really psych yourself up for a gig in a situation that isn't ideal. Yeah. Um, but they'd set, they went, oh, there's your performance space. And I went, where? And they went, oh, just there. And I went, well, so where are you talking about? There is nowhere here that I can perform. <laughs> no, literally. Um, so I had about a meter squared. Um, and I was right beside the the doorway to the, the residence rooms. Uh, now, obviously... Uh, with people who maybe uh, aren't as sharp as they used to be, um, mm -hmm. 
conventions of a show don't always apply as well. So, you know, I'm, I'm doing my thing, doing my show, doing my show. It's, it's going great, I must tell you. It's going great. I uh, don't want to brag. But um, then we have uh, a woman with a Zimmer frame begin to uh, very slowly. Now, when I say very slowly, I mean, like, we're talking, she's, she's already going slowly, but she's been uh, slowed down by the settings on YouTube to, like, 0 0.1 of the speed <laughs> of a human. So she's like, she's, like, going Zimmer down one step two step zimmer down one step two step and i'm going where's she off to where's she where you where you hey beryl where are you going where are you off to babes where are you off to uh turns out she's gonna go to her room uh i am in front of the doorway so i'm going cool okay this is wonderful keep going with the act i've got a uh, got a bird puppet on my arm at this point mm -hmm. Uh, on yeah. my stand, on the stand, bird puppet on the stand. You can visualize it, the power of imagination. Wow. And Beryl's getting closer. Beryl's getting closer now. She really is gaining on me. And um, so I have to uh, mid-act, and I keep going because I was 16 and clueless, uh, mm -hmm. tilt my stand, just tilt, really tilting at this point, just tilt <laughs> as she... As she, you know, just just keep keep going with the act. Oh, you you, you did you have a nice day? Oh, yes, I did, thank you. She's nearly gone. She's nearly one, one, one. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was great. Thank you. One, one, one. And then a uh, few. She, she's gone. Put the, put, the, put the thing back down. Wonderful. Um, now, now, Beryl didn't want to go to her room, so she turned around and um, <laughs> she came back. Um, so I, um, I lost my mind and started mm -hmm. humming the Chariots of Fire music, which is uh, the classic slow motion yeah. music, yeah. Uh, dun, 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 <laughs> which was terrible of me, but I had to amuse myself at that point. But other than that, uh, it was, you know, it was a lovely gig. I did love doing those gigs. They were, they were really special because obviously ventriloquism, uh, as such a traditional art form, mm. sparks so much joy in, in an older generation as well. Um, and when you can bring it to them, and also the fact that you walk in and they go, oh, young man. They're a bit, they're a bit, you know, uh, all the old women love it. If um, I was 60 years younger, <laughs> I was like, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I had um, one lady called Veronica uh, after a show. Uh, she said, uh, oh, oh, I, I, I really, I really did. In that was very good. I really did enjoy that. And I went, oh, thank you so much, Veronica. That was that was lovely. Um, the only thing was, Veronica was asleep for the entire forty-five minutes. So, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, no. best nap of my life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, love a comedy nap. <laughs> Man, oh wow, that is great. Well, um, what are you currently? I mean, what are you current? Any current projects you're working on now, or anything that you have planned for the future? Um, you want to share? Uh, well, at the moment, I'm just sort of ticking along. I'm doing some uh, weekly weekly gigs and stuff, little live things, uh, mm. and also creating some video content as a little job, which is quite nice. Um, I've got my backdrop. It's very professional. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm working on things. I'm sort of trying to, trying to update my routines, write some more jokes, be a bit funny. Um, and I'm thinking of a few new characters and a few new direction sort of ideas um, mm. in terms of things like instead of just the sort of what, what I would refer to as mainstream, nothing wrong with it, uh, shows that I do at the moment, all sorts. Mm. Um, there is also something I really like to do in a sort of more fringy style. Don't know if that reference translates, but um, more like what you'd see at, like an art center in the UK. So something that is a bit more like a small scale production show where I can be, oh, wow. I can have a bit more of a, an arc to my show as well as sort of ups and downs and maybe moments of uh, a possible moment of sincerity between me and my granddad, which I can mm. then obviously rip apart uh, for comedic effect. But um, yeah, I'd li I like to explore uh, a full show that I could, you know, put on myself. That would be, that's sort of the next big project. Probably won't happen for a few years, but uh, just bouncing ideas around, really. Wow, phenomenal. Where can people find you? Where can um, people find me? Uh, well, uh, I was, I was going to say you can find me in here um, because I'm really witty as well. Uh, it's part of the job. Um, but they the can find me on... Yeah. <laughs> 
they can find me on Facebook. I it's I think it's at Max Fulham Comedy because um, mm. the, at Max Fulham on Facebook was already taken by someone who doesn't use their account anymore. So I'm trying to delete them from existence and yeah. use their little at. I get, oh, I get oh, that. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, that's so frustrating. Oh, um, but yeah, so uh, <laughs> currently sending a friend request to some other random Max Fulham going, do, are you, are you, hello, are you still uh, alive? Do you, uh, do you use your Facebook? Could I um, possibly just, could you like not? Can you not? Can you just go? Um, and then no. Twitter, uh, what am I talking about? Twitter is at Max Fulham. Instagram is at Max Fulham. YouTube mm. is youtube.com slash something slash Max Fulham. Max Fulham, just type in Max Fulham. Uh, is seen there. Uh, yeah. yeah. Down yeah. Below. yeah always appreciate a little a little view or a like or a or a share it's all it's all bonkers stuff it's all very bonkers i think sort of a a, a point of reference that a few americans at the convention said it was a bit python-esque i am a bit i do tend to go towards the, the the silly as well as the standard sort of duologue between me and a puppet i do tend to angle towards the silly not that you can tell though not that you can tell Sure. And in wrapping up here, what do you hope to see from the future of ventriloquism and from future events? Oh, oh, I like that question. That's a really good question. Um, I would like to see, uh, oh, nearly said something then. Um, I would like to see uh, just more experimenting with the style, really, and uh, also a consciousness of what's gone before. I think it's really important to study what, what what's gone before. I watch a lot of you know old clips. I think that's so important because you can't you can't progress an art form without knowing what's gone before. So a knowledge of what's gone before, uh, innovating on what you can use. Uh, mm. Maybe look at um, you know I, I was I was thinking a lot. I have a few object puppets in my show, and the 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 sort of thinking behind that is it's a it's a similar transition that you saw with stage magic from big boxes and cheesy grins to uh, street magic, where it went to sort of uh, young people in hoodies with borrowed objects. It's yeah, I you know so there are a few things in my show. I have a talking pedal bin, um, and that's that that's come from a, a place of. I love puppets, like I really love puppets, which is why I have too many. But I think it's quite cool to to give to give voices to ordinary objects and and just play around with then can be done without a puppet because obviously originally, way back when, it was used to conjure up the spirits. So, you know, there's no limits on on what you can do with it really. Yeah. And what do you hope to see from future ventriloquists? The youth. Oh, um, more of those masks because they are fab. Though, yeah, like when you put it on an audio and that you make them, and it's yeah. really funny. Uh, right. And they they say like, "Oh, I want to dance." Oh, it's it break. Oh, it's it's wonderful. Um, yeah, more yeah, of them. Fifteen um, minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, but the, I mean, well talking um, to a fellow ventriloquist and fellow ventriloquists, it is mm -hmm. it is you know it's it's what I've been booked for on occasion uh, but i'm sort of like oh I, I i feel like i feel like this whole virus thing will have drastically reduced like i, I don't want to use them any, i don't want to use them anymore um but uh I, I don't think i don't think i will be because i i wouldn't be comfortable putting that on my face so i don't, i wouldn't expect anyone else to put that on their face god it's got a bit grim hasn't it max lighten up um anyway what i'd like to see more from from future events i'd like to see more experimenting i'd like to see more uh, risky ideas i'd like to see uh more people uh stepping away from the norm but not like uh d destroying it and more people who are passionate for the art form which is great to see because you do see people who are who mm -hmm. are passionate f for the art which is so so wonderful sure Absolutely, absolutely phenomenal. Max Fulham, thank you so much for joining us on Land and Live and for sharing your story. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. All right. Take care, guys. Thank you for tuning in. And thank you, Max, for being a part of this. Bye. <laughs>